celebration of our church anniversary. Beautiful. I mean, it was outstanding. If the committee is here, if you are part of you here, would you please stand? The homecoming committee. Amen. Let me say that. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Church anniversary. I said homecoming. I'm sorry. Get this. Get that. Get that. The church at all. The church anniversary committee. Yeah. All right. I want to say uh, that we certainly do thank you uh, for a job well done. Amen. And I kind of mentioned a little bit on last Sunday, but we was in a hurry. And uh, but I just want to put a little more emphasis on it. Um, this this was one of the better ones that we've had uh, because of your hard work and your dedication and your effort. Uh, I can say that uh, we have we had an outstanding year, and uh, you may be seated. I'm gonna, I'm going to say to you that I appreciate everybody, president of the committee, those workers who were working along with her, the silent workers who didn't really seek recognition, and don't care for it, but just basically they got involved. I want to say thank you. Now, secondly, I want to. Uh, say that on last Sunday we had, um, I mean, I was just so proud of six runs on last Sunday. We went to uh, Brother Jackson Church. The church was there. Y'all showed up in big numbers. And uh, it kind of reminded me of old times. And you all did an outstanding job. The mayor, of course, did great. The ushers did good. They were standing tall on their posts and they're standing again this morning. So, I mean, it looks like to me that we're doing better. And I think we ought to give God some praise for that. Amen. Amen. All right, turn to your neighbor and say it's preaching time. Amen. Ask you to turn your Bibles uh, to the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 14. When you get to chapter 14, uh, I'm going to ask if you would uh, notice verse 22, 22nd verse. That's where I would like to start reading. Verse 22. Amen. And straightway, Jesus constrained his disciples to get into a ship and to go before him unto the other side 
while he sent the multitudes away. And when he had sent the multitudes away, he went up into a mountain apart to pray. And when the evening was come, he was there alone. But the ship was now in the midst of the sea, tossed with waves, for the wind was contrary. And in the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went unto them, walking on the sea. He may be seated. Verse 25 is where I would like to lift this thought from. And in the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went unto them. Somebody said he went unto them. And walking on the sea. Amen. I want to preach from the subject. I want to speak from this subject. He will meet us in the storm. Amen. He will meet us in the storm. Turn to your neighbor and tell them Jesus will meet us in the storm. Now I know we've had many sermons from this particular particular passage here, but I just kind of want to take us in a little different way to this morning. And my aim or my desire is to look at the passage and after looking into it, ask a few questions of ourselves and then try to glean from the passage that something we could use for today. Now, I'll be talking a little bit about storms. And I want you to know that I'm not talking about literally a storm. But this is a metaphor, this is an example of life. And if we continue in life, it's not a matter of if the storm will come, but when. Amen. Amen. Storms. Storms. We will have them. We will face them. It doesn't matter how close we are to God. It doesn't matter how good we are trying to serve him. We better and should prepare for storms. And I don't want to spend a whole lot of time talking about storms because the good news is when the storm comes, we have someone who will meet us in the storm. Yeah. Storm of life. It could be storm of whatever. Yeah. Storm of sickness. Storm of family issues. Storms of all different kinds. They will face us. So now what do we do when we find ourselves in the storm? That's the question I want to ask. What do you do or do we do when we find ourselves in the storm of life? And it could be not only the storm, but storms more than one. What do you do? What do you do? Can I suggest one thing that we all should try to do when we find ourselves in the storm? First thing I believe that we should do with God's help and his mercy is that we should seek out courage. Okay? If you don't have anything to write that down with, write it into the edge of it in your heart, your mind, and your heart. To seek out courage. Now you might well say, Pastor, that why should I do that? Well, let me see if I can explain 
from the church as we continue in it, how we will discover the significance of courage. If we seek for courage and obtain it, guess what happens next? Whatever fear we are facing in the storm, we will overcome it. Amen? I said it will help us to overcome fear. Courage now, I'm talking about courage. It is the absence of courage when we find ourselves somewhat troubled in the storm. But if we can pray and ask God to give us the courage that is needed, then we'll be able to overcome the fear. I'm going to show you this in the text huh? a little bit later on, but I want to introduce it now because when I get to it, I want you to see exactly what I'm trying to say. Courage. Somebody say courage. Courage. Amen. So in the storm, uh, we don't get excited. I mean, if you can get, try to control it, manage the excitement. But the first thing we need to look for is fear because a lot of times, the biggest problem we have to deal with is the fear of the unknown. We don't know how it's going to turn out. And the devil is always giving us things in our minds to divert or to have us to chase after that, which is not true. Can I teach it? Now this goes for me too now. Amen. And see, I remember when I had my surgery in 2005, when I had the kidney removed, the problem that I had was not with the flesh. The problem that I had was with the mind. Because, see, the devil had came to me and told me everything that would happen to me and everything that he showed me was bad. And the reason why I was struggling was because I could not find the courage. If I could have obtained courage, I could have overcome the fear. Amen? Let me tell you another thing that courage does for the believers, for Christians, for us. Not only will it help us to overcome the fear, but courage will help us to master it. Somebody said master. master. In other words, it put you and me in a position where we control the fear and the fear don't control us. Amen. Now, let me set the record straight. Even if we obtain courage, and if we have the ability to overcome the fear, and even to master the fear, courage is not the absence of fear. Amen? Amen? Amen. Because fear is there. It's not the absence of fear. So this can be applicable to any problem or situation as a Christian that you and I are facing. Because we know if we obtain courage and have faith in him, he's going to meet you in the storm. Amen. 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 This, is, this is exciting to me. Now, now, let's go back to the text and try to try to at least prove what I just, the statements I just made. The text introduces us to Jesus after Jesus rather had performed a miracle. What he did was, after he gave the loaves and the fish to the children to the people, the scripture says that he constrained his disciples to get into a ship and to go before him unto the other side while he sent the multitude away. He cursed, he cursed, he, he told them, get in the ship, you go on the other side, I'm gonna meet you there. But I have a mission first, I got, I got to get, take care of the ones now who have eaten, and now they must also have some attention, so I'm gonna send them away. But I'm gonna meet you on the other side, get it now. He says, I'm gonna meet you on the other side. Amen? Amen. Somebody said he will meet you. He will meet you. On the other side. On the other side. 
And this is, I'm, I'm slow, I'm deliberate, because I want us all to get it. And I want us to understand that what the Lord is speaking to us about this morning, you and I can think on it. The devil might not want us to do it, but he will. Now, all right, when he said, down to the, uh, the multitude away, verse 23 says, he went up into the mountains apart to pray. And when the evening was calm, he was there alone. And the next thing we see in verse 24 is, but the ship is now in the midst of the sea. Okay? He told them to go, get into it, go to the other side. It's in the midst of the sea. It is out there in the midst of the sea. The next thing we see is that while it is in the sea, it is tossed with waves, for the wind was contrary. Had no idea when they set sail that even they would run into a storm. That's the way it is with life, brothers and sisters. We go from day to day, time to time, and we don't never know what the next minute or the next moment brings. All of a sudden, it comes, seems like, from nowhere. So they're out there in the midst of the sea. Now, in the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went unto them, and he was walking on the sea. I want you to picture that in your mind. Here you are, out there in the midst of the sea. The wind is boisterous. The ship is rocking and everything else. And all of a sudden, you see somebody walking in the on the water at that time of the morning. That would be a strange sight, wouldn't it? It would be a fearful sight too, right? Well, don't, don't sit there like you got all that. <laughs> you know, it would excite you and us as well. I mean, all of a sudden. And, 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 and because we see here in the text, it says that when they saw Jesus walking on the sea, they were troubled. See, these are not my words. Saying it is a spirit. And the scripture says, and they cried out for fear. Okay? They had a storm. Now, they are out there. They're crying out for fear. Now, at this particular moment, they're fearful because of what they saw. But here's the comforting, uh, here's the comforting statement about this. Now, in the midst of that, it says, now, Jesus says in so many words, I'm paraphrasing, he says, calm down. Well, right now, I just read it. But straightway, Jesus said unto them, be of good courage, or be of good cheer, it is I, and be not afraid. Okay? Now, that, that's, that's the moment that Jesus now is trying to get them to become courageous about what they're facing. Now, I will say this. We should never underestimate the power of a storm. Storms can be powerful. Literally, storms can destroy. We are facing with them every season. The damage the storms can do. So the idea of that is that we all must respect the storm, but don't be fearful. We must respect the storms, but somehow or another try to become courageous. He says, be of good cheer, it's I. Cheer yourself up, don't be afraid, it is me. Now, things now begin to escalate. We see now that Peter grants or asks a request of Jesus. Peter answered and said unto him, Lord, if it be thou, bid me to come unto thee on the water. Okay? Now look at what is around him. The winds are blowing, the waves are they're, they're boisterous, the storm is raging. Uh, you see Jesus out there in the middle of the early in the morning. He's fearful because he doesn't know what it is. And Jesus calms them down, and what he says to Peter is, you come to me. Okay? Oh, 
He said, uh, uh, he said to Peter, Peter says, uh, Lord, if it's you, says, let me come to you on the water. And the next thing we read is, and Jesus said, come. Now here is the meeting of the two. He's walking towards Jesus, and Jesus is coming towards him. So what is happening here? Jesus is meeting Peter in the storm. Amen. <laughs> now, here's an interesting question that every believer ought to ask themselves when they study this parable. Why was it that Peter requests to get out of the ship? Why was he requesting to get out of the ship? Here is my answer to that. And perhaps you might agree, and maybe you don't. Don't kid yourselves. These men were experts when it comes to sailing with the sea. They knew exactly what to do. This was probably not the first storm they had encountered, but one thing for sure, they have never encountered one like this. And so he says to Jesus, if it's you, let me come to you. Now you would think that by him being in the ship, that would be his safest place to be mm -hmm. while the storm was raging. Yeah. But the Holy Ghost blessed me this morning when I looked at it. He said, tell my people this. That sometimes, even though you think you're in the worst of the storm, you might have to get in something a little bit worse to be delivered. Now, he could have stayed in the ship, perhaps, and no telling what could have taken place. But to get out there and walk on stormy seas is altogether another thing. And so the, he says, Lord, uh, let me come to you. Now, and Jesus did not deny him as I get ready to turn the corner, as we say. But he told him to come. Now, I told you that if we can get the courage while we're in storm, we will overcome the fear of the storm. Because it takes courage to step out of a ship and walk on water, and nobody else says that we does it. You got to have courage to do that. And, and then if you got the courage, you got fearful of what you're going to attempt to do because you have overcame that. You mastered that. And so Peter starts to defy the law of gravity. He walks on the water, and what is holding him up is one word that Jesus said, come. And when he steps out, he's there in the midst of it. Now, I see the courage there. I see him overcoming the fear. Amen. And also I understand too that he's still in the storm. But verse 30 says, 30 says, but when he saw the boisterous, the wind was boisterous, all of a sudden he lost courage. Yeah. And then when he lost the courage, guess what reappeared? Fear. As long as he had the courage, Courage will sustain him. Brothers and sisters, that's the way it is with me and you. If we're in the storms of life, maintain the courage while we're in it, knowing that God and through it, that Jesus is not going to deny us or leave us, but concentrate on the fact that while I'm in there, he's going to meet me. While I'm in the storm. So the scripture says, as Peter began to walk towards Jesus, he looked around, he saw the wind, and then all of a sudden, he was afraid. And after the fear came in, that's when the storm really somewhat got worse because the Bible says he started to sink. And as he's sinking, as he's sinking, somebody said, as he's sinking, he cried. 
Now, when the chorus is no longer there, when fear is running rampant, yes, when it seems as if hope has dissipated, yeah. everything else is going the opposite of what you expected, there ain't nothing wrong with the crowd. Because when you cry, uh -huh. somebody said, well, I cry. After he told me to come. And after I've lost my courage, yeah. amen, when I get to that point, I ain't got to worry about a thing if I truly believe that he's going to meet me in the storm. Yeah. Has anybody ever had any storms? Any storms in your life? And here's another thing about it. The text says this, and when he started to sing, Jesus stretched forth his hand. Somebody say he preached out. Amen. What's the lesson of that? He will never leave us. Not will he forsake us. Because there's something about a cry. When the Lord's children yell and pray and cry. There's something about a cry. He reaches out and he says to him, Oh, ye of little faith, wherefore did he doubt? I can tell you when he doubted, he doubted when he lost his courage. Yeah. Amen. And fear reappeared. Amen. So, as I take my seat, brothers and sisters, I want you to know that you and I can make it in the storm. Keep on reaching because he's going to show up. That's why. 
stretch out his hand and keep us from sinking. He didn't have a long prayer. He didn't have a long prayer. He only used three words. Three words. You ain't got to have a long prayer. Thank you.
who's going to be with us. In spite of what it looks like, Jesus can do anything but fail. And I don't know, I wish I would spend a little more time on that word, come. Come. It's come. Oh, there's so much in that. And there's so much in that one of the simple words. Come on. I really enjoyed the service today. Well, before I go, before we go, if there's anyone who don't belong to a church, you'd like to come and join the church. Any church of your choice. Any church that you might be to you may come. You may come by letter or the baptism of Christian experience. Either way, it's okay. We're not going to have a prayer for the day, but you know, let me tell you something. If you can't get the answer to your problem, a few moments ago, that's because you didn't put nothing in it. Of his Holy Spirit. May he rest. We may he abide with us until we all meet again. And all over the building, everybody said amen. 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 Have a wonderful day. God bless you.